Thank you for today. Thank you for your continued grace and blessings. Lord, today I ask for clarity that only you can bring. When everything feels noisy, confusing, and overwhelming, your peace is what I seek. Lord, be my center in the midst of the storm. When my mind is consumed with worry and doubt, lead me to your still waters. In Jesus' name I pray. Cartel got me working for the big faces Federally got my car full of brick cases Hit the pen with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces God out, shoulda seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to get back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never... Desert View Bible Church. God bless you. Uh, my name is Pastor Manny Rivera. Um, I'm the pastor here in Aurora, one of the pastors uh, at Restoration Church. Um, I've been here pastoring for seven years. I'm originally from, from Chicago, born and raised. I gave my life to Christ back in 2007. Um, the Lord definitely did uh, an amazing work in my life. Uh, before before Christ, I uh, was lost on the streets of Chicago, northwest side of Chicago, uh, involved in gangs, involved in drugs, um, been to prison, just very rough, uh, destructive life that I was involved in, and, and homeless, and living in group homes, just from the age of 14 to 24, um, just living a rough life, and then uh, in 2007, I, I encountered Christ, but I had noticed that even since I was a child, until that, until conversion, I seen how God kept pursuing me and kept trying to get my attention. Uh, I met my wife in 2000, in 2000, and she was a uh, she's a Christian, and she's the one that really started introducing me to to the Lord and introduced me to the whole church scene. And um, it was until 2007 that I totally, fully converted to Christ through uh, through a warning of um, of my of my old pastor from my previous church where I was what I was saved I was visiting the church and um, he had told me straight up he's like you're you're running from your calling God has something in store for you but at that time you know I was deeply involved in you know drug addiction and um, just my mind was all over the place. I didn't love myself. I couldn't love other people. It was just a lot of stuff going on within me. And he shared that with me. And within two weeks of that that warning, from what I remember, um, I got shot. So I got shot July 7, 2007. I almost lost my life. And that was the, the eye-opening experience. That was the, the, the warning that I got, but that was also the eye opener to say, okay, now it's it's time to to make a change. So I, I ended up going to the church and I ended up totally just surrendering, um, asking God to forgive me, accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and asking Him to to help me to become who I am today, and just wanting to establish a relationship with Him. It was a it was a difficult journey in the beginning as I came in to the church, highly addicted. To, to drugs, to cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, but it was um, it was a process. Once I surrendered, I, I said, God, I need help to overcome these addictions, and um, I just went went cold turkey. 
didn't have to do rehab, didn't have to do any of that. I just started getting into prayer, started fasting, started seeking God. And within, you know, uh, just weeks and months started passing and started, God started detoxing, detoxing me and delivering me and doing so much works in me. And within a year that I was in the church, I started working with youth. I was in uh, in youth ministry for about eight years. So I was a youth pastor for eight years and uh, helped out uh, younger individuals that were involved in gangs to get out of gangs and to help them, you know, basically teaching them about the Lord and telling them about Christ. And a lot of these individuals that have given their life to the Lord to this day, they're, they're walking with God. They're, they're serving in their church. Some have, uh, you know, graduated high school, gone to college, have families. Just saw awesome things. Um, the call of ministry came in in 2014. We were called out here to Aurora. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been an awesome, awesome journey. Um, our heart and our passion, our vision at Restoration Church is to is to reach the unreachable. It's to um, so we, we draw these individuals that don't want to go to church, that never had a desire to go to church because of perhaps their upbringing or maybe, um, it's, it's sad to say, but there's individuals that have been to churches in the past and they've been hurt by the church and they don't want nothing to do with church ever again in their life. So we pray that God brings individuals that have been, you know, rejected, have been um, not accepted, and we're called restoration because we um, we have different individuals within the church that have been restored from from addictions, that have been set free from gang activity, that have came in with broken marriages, and God has restored them um, from individuals you know struggling with sickness, and the Lord has healed them. We've seen so many amazing things within the church, and our heart. And our passion is to just do be be the hands and feet of Jesus here in the city of Aurora. There is so much need here in this city. Um, you know, being originally from Chicago and spending these last seven years here to me is just a it's a smaller version of Chicago. Um, it's there's people that are struggling. Um, there's individuals that that are just lost and they need they need the Lord and. Um, there's a great need for uh, prison ministry here. There's a great need for reaching out to, there's a lot of gang activity. There's a lot of individuals that are involved in, in this lifestyle of, of addictions and people, there's a lot of people that are lost that need Jesus, amen? And um, I thank God that I was able to to meet with JC and, and make that connection with him. I think it was, it was about six months ago, six months ago. And uh, you know, I was one of his one of his followers on on, on Instagram, no, on YouTube, and uh, I started following him about three years ago, four years ago. Just the, the videos that that he was sharing. One of our members from our church is like, Pastor, you need to check this guy out. So I started watching the videos and the information that he would put on there, and it was just a lot of things that that you know caught my attention. It was reminding me of where you know growing up in Chicago and stuff, but seen when he had placed that one video like i'm done i'm no longer posting gang videos or any of cartel videos I'm, i've given my life to christ that video when he shared that it really touched me it really did because i seen his genuine repentance i seen god was really doing something within him and i remember uh just sending him a message on youtube hey i'm super happy for you i'm proud of you man i hope uh Everything goes well. I'm a, I'm a pastor in, in Aurora. I got a similar similar story like you. Um, I grew up at Humble Park and just I sent him my info. To be honest with you, since he had so many so many followers, I didn't think he was gonna respond to me, <laughs> but he did. Like within that day, and then um, then we just started talking, and ever since just uh, communicating through text, through uh, FaceTime videos, and just encouraging one another and praying for one another. And I see so many uh, great qualities in, in JC and, and I could really see God really working in him. And he has an amazing gift um, of, of speaking to people and getting connected with individuals and just his story him, his, itself, his story of what he's been through, what he's faced. I know that God has grabbed 
his mess from his past and turned it into a message of hope, of salvation, of deliverance. Um, there's so many individuals that are broken, so many individuals that were just like us, that are hurting, that have been involved in gangs, that have been involved or currently still involved or addicted or just similarities. And I feel that God raises up men like JC and myself and others that been through these lifestyles. He changes them, transforms them, does a great work within them, and then builds them up to be lights of hope for those that don't have any hope. Just being here with him for the last two days has been uh, has been great, has been awesome, and I can see how God 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 uses him, uses him in a great way, and I know that um, the Lord has great things in store for him, and I just want to be uh, that friend and that brother um, to him and, and pray with him and encourage him and, and give him whatever advice I can give him. Um, but I see God doing great things in his life and just looking forward to the connection that that God is beginning to establish his heart that he has for, for Chicago and the people of Chicago and being here and being in, like I said, Aurora is like a second Chicago. There's Big, the population here is over, I think it's over 200,000 people. And um, it's a big, uh, it's, it's Latinos, is about 80% Latino here. But the culture here, um, from what I've experienced in the last seven years, um, there is, there is a lot of, uh, I see how the community comes together and supports different things within uh, any positive stuff that's happening they'll step up and they'll help we've done a lot of different events within the church and we've seen how the community of aurora has stepped in and want to be part of it and want to um, um be part of some positive something different and i know that that jc has a lot on his mind a lot of his heart that he wants to do for 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 individuals that were just like us um and great things for the kingdom of God. So we're just, I'm just praying with him. I'm praying for him, um, asking the Lord how he wants to, to make this work, how he wants to make this happen. And I'm, I'm on board to help whatever way I can, but also being able to bring others in and help network and how we can just be supportive and how we can help as much, as many as people as possible. There's so many people that need the Lord in this city. Um, this is called the city of lights. And we, we wanna be the lights of Jesus here in Aurora. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I have for right now. But- um, Is it true that JC gets up really early in the morning? Oh my goodness, he's up at three in the morning, two in the morning sometimes. He send me messages and I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm trying to, but, um, it's awesome. He's a very, very uh, uh, on point. Um, he's very serious about his walk. I can see it. I can feel it. Um, I had uh, our brothers here. I had a group of brothers meet up with him on the first day he came out. And I just let them just get around him and ask him questions and spend time with him. And and I had some great feedback from the brothers from the church. And I'm like, man, pastor, this guy is awesome. He's a you can feel his, you can see his genuineness. You can see that he's really in love with the Lord. You can see his, his change, like this man is really on fire for God. So you got a, an awesome man that's part of your church that has a great desire to reach as many as possible. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of what God is doing in him. I'm happy, I feel like I've been knowing this man all my life. Just with the with the brotherhood and the connection, it's just it's just I, I guess maybe because we've been through similar things. He's gone through more than I have, but um, of just growing up with from the gang life and being in jail and being addicted to drugs and hurting and and coming to points where you have everything, but you still have that void, that emptiness, and knowing that that void and that emptiness. That was, we needed was Jesus and we, that was like we both have Jesus in our hearts it's like this was like the, the cherry on top this is what this like God just did an awesome work and knowing that we serve the same father we are brothers in the Lord we are brothers in Christ and 
his passion and vision for people and, and wanting to reach individuals that, that need the Lord. And, and I, I see a lot of similarities uh, within him and I, the vision, the, the wanting to reach out to, to the masses is, is amazing. Um, yeah, I'm very blessed and very happy to make this connection with him and um, have him come share at a church, share his testimony uh, here at, at Restoration. It, it, to, to me, it, it, I, it does, I'm very happy, but there's so many that um, need to he hear his story and opening the doors to the church is gonna make that happen. And we're excited about tomorrow. We're praying that there'll be hundreds that give their life to Jesus. And yeah, so I'm just really, really blessed to have this man in my life. And so happy to, to see what God has in store and what he wants to do in the future and how we can work together as a team and just met, reach as many as we can for Jesus. So God bless you. Love you guys, you know, pray for us. We'll be praying for your church. I've heard so many wonderful things about your church through JC. And uh, pray that the Lord continues to do his work there in Arizona. And maybe one day I'll go and visit, you know, with this crazy weather over here. Some days it's warm, some days it's super cold and freezing and having the hot weather over there. I'd like to go and, and, and meet all of you and, and make that connection. So God bless you. Uh, thank you for this privilege. Thank you for allowing him to come out here and, and supporting him and being there for him. Thank you so much. We love you guys.